In this video, I'm gonna to show you how I built this router table cart. I first draw the cart using SketchUp. I'm building this cart for my Bosch RA11A9 router table. I set up the height of the cart when the router table is on top to be the same height as my table saw, so I can use it as an extension table when I need it. Then, for the remaining space in the middle of the cart, I put two drawers. I also left the button space for the case that comes with the router. As I want everything in my shop to be mobile, I also added 3 inch casters to the cart. The next step is to calculate the materials I need to buy from home centers. I'm using an extension called Open Cut List in SketchUp, where you can easily generate cut lists for your materials. This is important for me because I'm buying full sheet of plywood from Home Depot, but I only have a small car. So I need to get the materials pre-cut to rough size to fit into my trunk, which is about the size of 2x4. After rough cutting the plywood in the store, I haul them back to my shop and cut them to size. For the back panel, instead of using a plywood, I wanted to use solid wood as added support and use a piece of scrape 1 8 of vanilla plywood. I first rough cut a large board to show the size in my miter saw. I then rip them into four strips with my table saw. I cut them to final size back at the miter saw. Now it's time to drill pocket holes. For the frame assembly, I use a crack K5 jig to drill pocket holes at the sides at button piece. The nice thing about this jig is that it's super easy to clamp the pieces after you set it to the right thickness. Also the vacuum connection wraps almost all the sawdust. I used to use a crack R3 jig and it leaves my shop in a mess. I finally pulled the trigger to purchase a K5 jig and never regret it. When assembling the frames, I realized that I should have purchased more right angle clamps. I only have one angle clamp from Bessie, and it's surprisingly hard to clamp both corners together and it took me a long time to align and drive the pocket screws perfectly. Next time when I do this, I should probably grab a pair of corner clamps from Craig that optimizes for pocket holes. I realized that I also need to use pocket holes to attach it to the frame, therefore I drew some more. Attaching the back frame to the cabinet is straightforward, but I realized that I need more pocket holes to secure the tabletop to the back frame, so I pulled out my R3 jig to drill two more. Since it's compact, I don't have to disassemble the frame and I simply use them in place. I built all of my shock cabinets using plywood. One thing about plywood is those edges that reveal the plywood layers. I don't normally care about them since it's shop project anyway. But for this one, I wanted to try adding some trims and face frames to hide the plywood edge. I cut a pine board to lens in my miter saw, then ripped the trims with my table saw. To simplify things a little, I cut them to the same size of my plywood thickness, which is 3 quarters. I 
bought a prefinished plywood for the cabinet, and in order to match the color and sheen at the trims, I used Danish oil to give them protection and color. I wipe all the trim pieces and let dry for at least 8 hours, and repeat the process for a couple times to get the desired sheen. After the finish, I glue the trim pieces to the tabletop and use a strap clamp to clamp them tightly. For the face frame, I glue them together before gluing to the cabinet. I only have a few clamps that are long enough to clamp them, and that's why people always complain they need more clamps. I use half-inch plywood for the drawer button, as I realized it will be too heavy if I use 3 quarters plywood for that. I found myself cutting a lot of plywood down to size. My circular saw does not have a vacuum attachment and it blows dust everywhere. I finally purchased a track saw that can connect to a shop bag and I really liked it. It cuts very accurately and leaves my workplace clean. After cross-cutting the plywood to manageable size, I used table saw to rip it to the final size. For the drawer sides, I continue to use 3 quarters plywood as the drawer spacing requires accurate size and I do not want to change my design. Also, I have some extra 3 quarters plywood from cutting the cabinet frames. Building drawers using pocket holes is really easy and is by far my favorite method. The idea is to connect the drawer front and back to the sides using pocket holes. When the drawer front is attached, the pocket holes will be hidden. Similarly for drawer button, the pocket holes will be at the underside so they won't be shown either. To attach the drawer button, I first drop the drawer button to flush, then I clamp some holder pieces so when I click the drawer over, the clamped pieces will cushion the button flush with the button edge, and it'll be super easy to drive the screws into the pocket holes. Once the drawers are built, it's time to put them onto the cabinet. The first step is to mount the drawer slides to the cabinet. I found it easiest to simply use some spacers to hold the slides to desired height. Make sure it's level, then simply secure the slides with screws. To attach the slide to the drawer, I again use some spacers to create clearance between the drawer button and center face frame. Then use the same spacer when I installed the slide rail to cabinet to level the drawer. Now I can glide the rail out and mount it to the drawer. To mount the second drawer, I used two half-inch plywood as spacers to install the drawer slides to cabinet. After that, I can keep the spacer and mount the second drawer similarly to how I did before. I took out the drawers and drove a couple more screws to secure the drawer slide to the drawer firmly. Finally, it's time to mount them back and check. These full extension drawer slides are a little bit pricey, but the ball bearing makes it super smooth. The drawer can extend fully and therefore I think it's totally worth it.
I use a square piece of pine board and rip them for the drawer fronts. Before installing them to the drawer, I apply some Danish oil to seal and protect them. To mount the drawer front, I start working on the bottom drawer and use some spacers to lift the drawer front to the desired height. I carefully use the marking ruler to make sure it has the same spacing to the left and right, and check its level. Once that's done, I clamp the drawer front to the drawer and pull it out. I produce holes and drive screws to hold them together. I'm the type of the guy that really want to keep my shop clean. So I typically clean the sawdust right after I created them. I found it a lot easier to clean as you go, as the longer the sawdust is there, the more likely it's blown everywhere and hidden at the corner. Once the drawer front is screwed in place, I install the drawer back to double check the placement. Now it's time to work on the top drawer front. Spacer is really the key in this kind of project. I use a thin spacer to create clearance between the top and bottom drawer front and attach it to the top drawer. After both drawer fronts are installed, it's time to do a final check before installing the drawer pulls. I put the two drawers back, open and close it a couple times to make sure everything is okay. It's always fulfilling every time I saw them slide in and out smoothly. To install drawer pull, I typically use my crab drawer pull jig, but this time my drawer is huge, almost 30 inches wide. The recommended drawer pull size is typically one third of the drawer width. This means I have to use 10 inch long drawer pull, and the crab jig can only handle as wide as 5 inch. Since I purchased a dozen of these drawer pulls, I decided to make a template for them so that next time I can reuse and get accurate results. I didn't record the process, but it's as simple as marking the two holes at the center line of a scrap piece of wood, then cut to size. You can even do this with a cardboard. Once the template is made, I carefully marked out the center location at the drawer front, then aligned the template to make sure it's leveled. I clamp it down and drill the two holes. When you are doing that, make sure to clamp a piece of scrap root at the back, so it won't chip out. With the template, it's super easy to reproduce the exact same result at the next drawer. Now that the drawers are finished, we can attach the back panel. As mentioned earlier, I'm going to use a thin plywood that's sitting at my shop for a long time as the back panel. After I put glues all over the back frame, I use my newly purchased corners nailer to attach the panel. The nailer is a little bit heavy, but it saved me a ton of clamping, and I can continue the work without waiting the glue to dry. I want everything in my shop to be mobile, so casters are a must. I've always used these 3-inch casters, and installing them is a breeze. Finally, the cabinet is finished. It's time to put it to the ground and test the views. Man, it's so heavy! To bolt the router table to the cart, I first position the table to the desired location, then clamp a strip of wood to keep its location. I drill four pilot holes, remove the table, then drill the holes all the way through. Now I can put the table back and securely tighten all the bolts.
Finally, I put the router carry case to the bottom slot. I calculated the spacing carefully in my design, and I'm super happy with the result. And there you go, a mobile cart for the router table. I can't wait to start my next project using it. Thanks for watching.